It's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome to my channel. In the previous video, we have talked about methemoglobinemia. Today, let's talk about the diagnosis and treatment of this crazy disease. So, let's get started. As you know, there are three causes of hypoxia, ischemia, hypoxemia, and dyshemoglobin. Dyshemoglobin includes methemoglobinemia, where the SAO2 or the oxygen saturation is low, which will lead to hypoxia, absolutely. Functional anemia, yes, because the red blood cells cannot transport oxygen to the tissue, so you end up, it's like anemia. Anaerobic glycolysis, yes, we ran out of oxygen. We switched to anaerobic, there's an A here, sorry and aerobic glycolysis, which will lead to lactic acidosis. Lactic acidosis will lead to metabolic acidosis. We have two types of metabolic acidosis, high anion gap metabolic acidosis and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Which type is seen in lactic acidosis? The answer is HAGMA. Clinical pictures of hypoxia, cyanosis, confusion, cognitive impairment, lethargy, and fatigue. We have talked about this in the previous video. Normal hemoglobin and this hemoglobin couldn't be more different. The saturation in the normal hemoglobin is around 97%. In the dis hemoglobin, such as methemoglobinemia, let's say 50%. So huge difference here. We have discussed this vignette in the previous video, but if this is the first time for you to see it, pause and try to answer it. And the answer is, of course, methemoglobinemia. What's bad about methemoglobinemia is that Fe3 cannot carry oxygen because only Fe2 carries O2. The methemoglobin cannot carry oxygen, leading to low oxygen saturation and will lead to hypoxia, increased EPO as a negative feedback or as a response, leading to secondary erythrocytosis. Can this process lead to iron deficiency? Absolutely, because we have consumed all of the iron storage in order to produce this massive amount of red blood cells. Oxygen content equals hemoglobin concentration plus PaO2 plus SaO2. Which one is affected in methemoglobinemia? The SaO2 is decreased. PaO2 is normal. Hemoglobin concentration is normal. Oxygen content is decreased because the SaO2 is decreased. The definition of methemoglobinemia is when the methemoglobin level exceeds 1% of the total hemoglobin concentration because normally it's less than half. You have hypoxia and functional anemia. You have left shift of the oxygen dissociation curve and the tissue is left behind without oxygen. The methemoglobin is really ugly. Why? It doesn't bind oxygen and even the oxygen that's already on the hemoglobin, it prevents it from being released to the tissue. This is called left shift of the oxygen dissociation curve. Causes of methemoglobinemia, again discussed in the previous video, acquired, please don't forget the sulfa drugs, the local anesthetics, the lidocaine and benzocaine, the acetaminophen, and anything with nitro or nitrate or nitrite in it. Congenital G6PD deficiency and deficiency of the amazing enzyme NADPH dependent cytochrome B5 methemoglobin reductase. In medicine, there are two types of cyanosis, central cyanosis and peripheral cyanosis. But first, what is cyanosis? It's bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane. Why? Because the deoxyhemoglobin is more than 5. What is the deoxyhemoglobin? It's any hemoglobin that's not oxy. Central, the entire body is blue, mainly tongues and lips. Tongues and lips are never or almost never present in peripheral cyanosis. Although there is an exception, if you have an obstruction of an artery that supplies the tongue or the lips. <laughs> it's a very crazy exception, but it's true. But generally speaking, in central, the whole body is blue, especially tongue and lips. And then, why is that? Because of ventilatory or circulatory failure. So brain problems, lung problems, heart problems, blood problems, such as methemoglobin. So the cyanosis in methemoglobin is central. SAO2 is less than 85%. On the other hand, peripheral cyanosis, the extremities are blue. Why? Inadequate or obstructed circulation, arterial problems or venous problems. Let's say you have a thrombus or an embolus obstructing the artery. You have less blood supply to your extremities. They turn blue. How about the SAO2 here? probably normal because the blood is fine it's just this particular crazy artery that is obstructed 
Now, nail clubbing is different. It's also known as digital clubbing or Hippocratic fingers because Hippocrates was the first one to describe the clubbing phenomenon. It's usually due to heart disease, lung disease, or GI disease. There is no clubbing in methemoglobinemia whatsoever. Galen, the Roman physician, once said, in order to diagnose, one must observe and reason. So let's observe the clinical findings in methemoglobinemia. So clinically speaking, you have skin discoloration. Describe it, pale, gray, blue, or dusky. Do you have clubbing? No. Do we have cyanosis? Yep. What kind of cyanosis? Is it central or peripheral? It's central. So, blue lips, blue tongue? Yep. Blue extremities? No. How about blue, like entire body? True. Headache, lightheadedness, weakness, palpitations, chest pain, confusion, altered mental status, delirium, seizure, acidosis, arrhythmia, and symptoms of anemia, and finally death. And the symptoms are dependent on the methemoglobin concentration. The higher the methemoglobin, the worse. How to diagnose this crazy methemoglobinemia? First, rule out other causes of hemolysis. So, by ordering complete blood count, reticulocyte count, bilirubin, LDH, haptoglobin, to rule out hemolytic anemia, for example. Screen for G6PD deficiency, absolutely. But remember, during the acute attacks in G6PD deficiency, never measure the G6PD level because it will be falsely elevated and you'll say oh, okay it's elevated right now so therefore this patient doesn't have a deficiency of the enzyme stupid doctor don't do it hemoglobin electrophoresis to rule out hemoglobin m disease also known as milwaukee disease enzyme assay for the amazing enzyme in adph dependent cytochrome b5 methemoglobin reductase blood color is dark brown described as chocolate colored blood there's a test called potassium cyanide test. We add cyanide to differentiate between methemoglobin and sulfhemoglobin. Methemoglobin plus cyanide gives you cyanomethemoglobin, which has a bright red color. The sulfhemoglobin doesn't have any bright red color when you add cyanide to it. In fact, before adding cyanide, the sulfhemoglobin sometimes looks green. Yes, indeed, sometimes your blood can be green when you have sulfhemoglobinemia, believe it or not. The filter paper test distinguishes between deoxyhemoglobin and methemoglobin. So what is the filter paper test? Let's see. So how to differentiate between deoxyhemoglobin and methemoglobin? The filter paper test. So you draw blood from the patient and it looks dark red. You have two possibilities. It could be a deoxyhemoglobin or a methemoglobin, for example, like if you, you draw blood from the vein, if the deoxyhemoglobin is like greater, like abnormally high, the blood is dark red. That's why your venous blood is darker than your arterial blood, because the oxyhemoglobin is less and the deoxyhemoglobin is more in your vein than in your artery. Common sense, people. But you can also have methemoglobin, so how to know which is which? Two drops of blood on white filter paper, exposed to oxygen. If the dark red color turns into bright red, boom, you have deoxyhemoglobin because now it's oxygenated. The deoxyhemoglobin has carbon dioxide, but it's still the hemoglobin is functional and it can bind oxygen because it's still ferrous and Fe2 binds O2. On the other hand, if the blood remains dark red, this is methemoglobin because the methemoglobin is ferric, which is hysteric. It cannot bind oxygen. And that's why we call it chocolate colored blood. How to manage this ugly disease? Remove the offending oxidizing drug. If the patient is taking Depson uh, before being a genius and start treating the patient, um, stop the Depson, you freaking idiot. Then there are mild cases, like the patient is kind of fine, give him vitamin C or vitamin B2, the riboflavin. Why giving vitamins? They decrease the methemoglobin level. That's how they treat cyanosis. Remember, you can describe these vitamins as antioxidants in a sense. And remember, the problem of methemoglobin was Fe2 converting into Fe3. This process is oxidation. That's why antioxidants can cure it, roughly speaking. It's not like 100% accurate, but it works. Fine, this treats cyanosis the vitamins. But giving oxygen, although it helps the patient, it doesn't cure the skin discoloration. Severe cases, when you have methemoglobin less than more than 
the patient is severely symptomatic, use the IV methylene blue, also known as methylthioninium chloride or whatever. Why do we give IV methylene blue? It accelerates the enzymatic reduction from methemoglobin to hemoglobin. Do you remember the name of the enzyme? NADH dependent cytochrome B5 methemoglobin reductase. IV methylene blue is contraindicated in patients with G6PD deficiency. It causes hemolysis. It's a stressor. It inhibits monoamine oxidase. So don't use it with MAOI inhibitors or with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Okay, bad things will happen. And let me know in the comments if you give SSRI with a drug that inhibits MAOI, what are the symptoms? Okay, mediocre students need not apply. This is rough. Dapson, used to treat leprosy, and in leprosy we have dermal problems, so the D mnemonic works. Dapson treats dermatitis herpetiformis, which is associated with, that's right, celiac disease. Also, you can have iron deficiency in that condition. Adverse effects of Dapson, leukemoid reaction, neuropathy, methemoglobinemia, absolutely, hemolysis and C6PD deficiency, and a granulocytosis. What is a granulocytosis? A means no. Osis means condition. Granulocytes is anything except lymphocytes and monocytes. So, granulocytes are neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils. Wonderful. A granulocytosis, you have deficiency of the granulocyte. That's what a granulocytosis means. It's similar to bone marrow suppression, but it's more specific because it involves only those three white blood cells. Before giving Dapson, please screen for the G6PD deficiency. Absolutely. Before giving any drug that can cause problems in G6PD deficiency patients, screen for G6PD deficiency disease. What are the sulfa drugs? Sulfonamides, which is the SMX in the TMP SMX drug, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. And it's antibiotic, which means antibacterial. Sulfonylureas, such as gliburide, which is anti-diabetic. Sulfasalazine, they are anti-rheumatic. When I say anti-rheumatic, I don't mean anti-rheumatic fever. I mean anti-rheumatoid arthritis. They are anti-rheumatism. That's why we call them anti-rheumatic. Sumatriptan, the anti-migraine drug. Diuretics such as hydrochlorothiazide and the famous loop diuretic furosemide. Dapson actually is a sulfa drug, yes indeed. Silococcib, which is an anti-inflammatory that's kind of smooth on your stomach, although not 100%, which is an anti-inflammatory. Since the name of this channel is Medicosis Perfectionalis, so let's be perfect and get rid of methemoglobinemia once and for all. It's very easy. What are the causes? We have acquired and we have congenital. Acquired, don't forget the crazy drugs, and congenital, the deficiency of the enzyme. Clinically speaking, skin discoloration. The question will describe it as dusky discoloration. Dark skin, dark bluish grayish skin. Cyanosis, yes, which is central and lightheadedness, headache, weakness, all of these symptoms. By the way, these symptoms are also present in CO poisoning, which we are going to talk about next. Diagnosis. How to diagnose it? Dusky colored skin. Chocolate colored blood. Enzyme assay for the methemoglobin reductase, and don't forget to screen for G6PD deficiency. Methemoglobinemia. It decreases the SAO2, which is the oxygen saturation. Don't use the pulse oximetry, because it might be normal. Use the pulse CO oximetry. Methemoglobinemia causes anemia, hypoxia, lactic acidosis. What type? High anion gap metabolic acidosis. Then we have the oxygen dissociation curve. Shift to the left, decrease release of oxygen to the tissue. The tissue is left behind. How to treat this crazy disease? If the patient has mild symptoms, vitamin B2, which is riboflavin, vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid. Severe, give IV methylene blue. And don't forget, oxygen helps. Hydrate the patient. He has acidosis, give bicarbonate. You guys love cases, so here is a case for you. And the question is, which of the following set of lab findings do you expect to find? Regarding the blood color, the PaO2, SaO2, oxygen content, hemoglobin concentration, and the anion gap. Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Is it D or E? 
In life, everything has its pros and cons. Met hemoglobin is no exception. What are the cons? It's a freaking disease. What are the pros? It can treat cyanide poisoning. So in the next video, let's talk about cyanide poisoning. Then we're going to talk about CO poisoning. Then we're going to start talking about platelets, bleeding problems, and coagulation disorders. If you really like this channel and would like to say thank you, I'd like to see you on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. I'll give you all of my notes. I'm writing cases right now on Patreon and you get post notes, audio notes, lots of things. So you can interact with me personally. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. And if you can't go there, if you wanna, don't want to support this channel, that's totally fine. But please consider sharing my videos. Thank you so much. Till next time, be safe, stay happy and study hard.